And CBS News transportation correspondent Chris Van Cleve joins me now from Philadelphia International Airport. Chris, we're now learning the cause of death of passenger Jennifer Reardon. What can you tell us? Yeah, the medical examiner just confirming to CBS News that the, her cause of death was ruled um, death due to blunt impact trauma of the head, neck, and torso. They ruled the death accidental. Uh, and on the investigation, what is the specific focus now of the NTSB's investigation? Well, the NTSB is focusing on one of the fan blades in the left engine. Now, basically, think about the engine. It basically, you know, it's a circle. And in the middle, there is a cone-like central piece. All of the fan blades clip into that central cone. One of the 24 fan blades uh, broke off basically at that connection point. They saw signs of metal fatigue at the point of breaking, and they've recovered about half of the fan blade. Uh, so they'll be able to study that. And based on, on, on the piece of the blade they recovered, the, the, the metal fatigue, the source of that, appeared to be on the inside of the, of the blade, so not something that would be easily spotted by the human eye. Um, uh, so th they're focusing on that. What they believe happened is, is the metal essentially wore out. The microscopic crack started to build. It broke, and then that fan blade got sucked into the engine, and that's what kicked out all this debris. It, it, it damaged the wing in several places, and it also uh, punched through that window into the cabin uh, where um, uh, Jennifer Reardon was sitting in row 14 with her seatbelt on, flying from LaGuardia to Dallas. Well, Chris, what do we know about how the airline and the pilot followed protocol? Well, you know, the, the, the pilots are trained what to do in a situation like this. They are not going to get through a simulator session or a check ride, as it's called, without uh, simulating an engine out, a solo engine landing. Uh, so this is something that they have trained for again and again and again. Uh, the captain here, uh, she'd been flying for more than three decades. She was one, uh, as you heard, uh, a former Navy fighter pilot. Uh, she was described as being very calm. You could hear that in the air traffic control tapes. Um, you know, basically, they, what the NTSB told us is they, they got an alarm in the cockpit that something was wrong with the engine. Shut then, then they lost the engine. And then they got another warning that they, the cabin had lost pressurization. And about that same time, the plane banked 40 degrees. So they would have, they, they very quickly brought the plane back to level and began aggressively descending. They needed to get down below 12, 10 to 12,000 feet to bring out the, the pressure in the plane so people could breathe. Uh, they're doing all this with oxygen masks on, communicating with air traffic control, figuring out where to land. And then when they came in to land, they were worried about their ability to control the airplane. So they brought the plane in faster than you normally would. They asked for a, a longer approach than normal because when they touched down, they were going about 190 miles an hour. We're told that's about 25% faster than you would typically aim for to bring a 737 into land. So a harrowing experience, but they, they did everything by the book and they did it right. Absolutely. Chris Van Cleve in Philadelphia for us. Chris, thank you.